four, sorry, four and five, and beta plus four plus three, and beta directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John, and said, Look at us. And the man paid attention to them, expecting that he was going to get something from them. We are speaking of the power of expectation, the power of expectation. We all know about the story in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1, where we are told of a man who used to be put at the gate of the temple called Beauty. The man was slain and he was kept there that he may be able to ask for arms or help or money to those who are going into the temple. And uh, the Bible speaks of when he saw Peter and John as they were to enter into the temple, that he looked at them. He looked past Verse. And so when he saw, verse 3, the Bible says, so when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them to give him a gift. He asked, but the Bible says, and Peter directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John, and said, look at us. And the Bible says, the man paid attention. The man paid attention. Verse, verse 4, verse 5. The man paid attention. In other words, that word attention means he was mentally focused. That word attention. He was mentally focused. And he was, and was expecting, he was expecting to receive from these people. Now that one expect from our dictionary, it means to anticipate in hope or fear. To anticipate in hope or in fear. So that one expect or expectation is not complete by itself. It is what you are expecting that now completes that anticipation. You might be anticipating, hoping, or you might be expecting, anticipating in fear, either in hope or in fear. So it is your expectation that will determine what you are expecting whether it will be manifested in your life. And expecting in hope is choosing to be opti or optimistic. You choose to be opti concerning your mission. You are optimistic. You are expecting for good to happen. That is hope. Opportunity where there are difficulties. Choosing to see an opportunity where there is difficulty. Or choosing to be positive or seeing the impossibility, the possibility of things and declaring with our Lord Jesus that all things are possible. All things. That is in anticipation of hope, expecting something good is going to happen. And also,
that one also expectation, you might put fear because you have said you either hope or fear, anticipation of hope or fear. And in fear is being pessimistic. In other words, rather than seeing the opportunity in the difficult, you see the difficult in the opportunity. You choose to see that whatever that you desire in your life is impossible. You choose to see impossibilities that it cannot take place, it cannot happen. That is in fear. And our expectation, even as we have been told, that expectation is the mother of manifestation. In other words, in our lives, there can never be a manifestation of anything unless we first expect it to happen. We have to begin by expecting it to happen. And so expectation, what it does, it triggers or it activates the law of attraction. Because whatever that comes our way, or whatever that we experience in life is what we have drawn to us by our expectation. So the, 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 ex, the our attitude of expectation activates the law of attraction. And that law of attraction magnetizes, it magnetizes the predominant thought in our mind. Whatever that is predominant in our thinking, that thought is magnetized. It, it is drawn to us through expectation by activating the law of attraction. So, if we want to change whatever that is happening in our lives, whatever we are experiencing, then we have to change or we have to activate the expectation of good, the expectation of good in our lives. And this is what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 in the Amplified Version, the Bible says, for surely there is an end. There is an end. Whatever that has begun, there is an end to it. And the Bible says it came to pass. Or whatever that is happening in your life, it is a season. It is a season. And season to change. And even seasons determines not to change. The God that we serve, the Bible says that He changes seasons and times up. So we serve a God who changes seasons and times up. So in whatever that we are in or whatever that we are going through, it is a season and it, it has come to pass. For it came and found us and it will leave us. And so the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 18, for surely there is a latter end. There is nothing that has no end. And a future and a reward. And so, and your hope and expectation shall not be cut off. In the latter end, whatever you are expecting, whatever you are believing God for, and we can connect that scripture with Jeremiah 29 verse 8. Verse 29, verse 11, where God says, I know the thoughts, I know the plans that I, that I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards you. They are plans of peace and not of evil. They are plans of peace and not of evil. To give you the expected end, the future, the future that you are expecting, my brother and my sister, believe you me that the God that we serve has said that there is always a latter end. There is an end to something. And the end that God is planning for us, according to his thoughts that he has towards us, is to give us that hope of whatever we have been expecting. Whatever 
whatever you have been expecting, your expectation shall not be cut off. In other words, you will come to see what you have been expecting. Amen. That emotion, that trust, that confidence, that belief, that expectation of something good going to happen in our lives, it will happen. Whatever that we expect, it will come to pass in our lives. And so, in Proverbs chapter, in Psalms, Psalms 118, verse 24. Psalms 118, verse 24, the Bible says that uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. In other words, every day of your life, when you wake up, let it be the day that the Lord has made for you. That, let that be your expectation. The, your expectation of good. Uh, let it be that every day is the day that the Lord has made. That is the day which the Lord has made. It is the Lord who has made the day. Hallelujah. And now because it is the Lord who has made the day, then there is no one else who has the right to determine what will happen in that day. Expect you and God according to your expectation and God because it is the Lord that has made that day. And he has made that day with the purpose. There is a purpose for that day. And now, our expectation will always allow us uh, to align ourselves uh, with the plans of God concerning our lives in that day. In every day, let us determine when we wake up in the morning that we rise, we raise our expectation that this is the day that the Lord has made for my breakthrough. That is my expectation. This is the day that the Lord has made up for my deliverance. This is the day that the Lord has made up for my victory. This is the day that the Lord has made up for my elevation. This is the day that the Lord has made up for my promotion. I determine the day according to my expectation. Because whatever I expect from the Lord is what is going to happen. If I will surrender myself, and surrender the day to the Lord. And allow that that day be the Lord's day. And let me tell you, the day of the Lord is the day of rest. Because it's the Lord of Sabbath. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of Sabbath. And so, the, the, the day of the Lord that the Lord has made is the day of rest. So, whatever happens in my life, I am at rest. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I pray that that shall be our 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 alarm in the morning when you wake up in the morning you wake up expecting that in this day that the Lord has made I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living Hallelujah Amen Amen, amen, amen. Psalm eighty five verse eight the Bible says concerning prayer concerning prayer you see it is interesting that we normally come and and and, and engage God in prayer and, and at times. We don't even have time to listen to what the Lord is saying to us. Because prayer is a communication. And you cannot communicate by yourself. There has to be somebody else that you are communicating with. And so, in prayer, being a communication, then after I have communicated, or after I have spoken, then I need also to listen and to hear. And that is why God gave us two ears, one mouth. So that you don't talk too much. Hallelujah. But you listen much. Listen more. That you listen more. And so the Bible says in Psalm 85, verse 8, I will listen. Hallelujah. After I have prayed, after I have communicated with God, I will listen with expectant to what God the Lord will say. For he will speak peace. I will listen. Hallelujah. It is time that we learn. You see, we are good communicators, but it is time that we learn even to listen. Hallelujah. Let us be good listeners. Amen. Because in, in listening, my brother, hallelujah, in listening, amen, in listening, you might learn something new, but in talking, you are only saying what you know. Hello? And God is desiring to but at times we are in a hurry. We come. The, the Bible says in, 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 in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I don't remember the verse where it is as it, where the Bible says, come, 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 come silently or slowly in the house of God. And do not talk much. Because God is in verse 1. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Because God is in heaven and you are on earth. Come, come to listen. Hallelujah. Come to listen. Amen. Keep your foot. Keep your mind to what you are doing. When you go as Jacob to the sacred people, to, to the house of God, to draw near, to hear and obey is better than to keep sacrifices of careless, irrelevant, to ignorance, to know that they are doing evil. Hello? What was you? Amen. Hallelujah. So, be not rash with your mouth and let not your heart be hasty to utter the word before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Hallelujah. God is desiring to communicate to us. But at times, we come and we are rushing and we are hasty with our mouth and we speak too much and we don't give God an opportunity to speak to us, to communicate back. Because they are saying, call unto me and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer you. So there is a place of waiting to listen expectantly. Psalm 85 verse 8, I will listen with expectance to what God the Lord will say. For he will speak peace. Hallelujah. In prayer, let us come expecting to hear from God. Because if we will live, even in the times that we are in, and the way that the world is growing to be wicked and wicked, and righteous are growing to be righteous and righteous, in the times that we are, we are in the last days of the last days. Because even if, if in the days of, of, of the, the, the church, the, the, the beginning of the church, the book of Acts, they were saying they were in the last day. How close are we to the last days that we are in? Hello? And if there is anything that we need, the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone. Matthew 4, 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by everyone that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. The proceeding, if we, we need to hear from God. If, so that whatever we are doing, we are doing it according to the will of God. And so the psalmist says, I will listen, I will listen, hallelujah. I will listen with expectancy what God will say to us. To hear from God is better than to speak to Him. Because you can speak to Him and never change your situation or change your, your, your circumstances. But if you hear from God and obey that voice of His word, my brother and my sister, that is where the secret of victory and breakthrough and overcoming is hearing from God. What God has said. And so the psalmist says, I will listen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, let us be quick to listen and slow to speak. Amen. I will listen. After speaking, after communicating to God, there is a necessity for us to listen and wait expectantly because God will speak to us. Hallelujah. Psalm 41, Psalm 40, verse 1. Waiting, waiting, hallelujah. Waiting, the Bible says, David declared, I will wait patiently. I will wait patiently and expectantly for the, for the Lord. Amen. Expectantly. I will wait. Amen. I will wait patiently. You see, when you are in that uh, state of waiting, it helps us uh, that when David was waiting, it is because uh, he was in an expectant mode because the situation that he was in uh, according to the ideal situation that he desired, the situation that he was in uh, was not the ideal. It was not his ideal situation. It was not his desire. And that is why he chose to wait patiently. Why? Because he knew that God will intervene in his situation. So in waiting, he tells me that the situation is not at its ideal situation. And so there is a necessity to wait upon the Lord. And I am glad because he says, I, will, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord. For the Lord. Hallelujah. He never expected, neither did he wait. For his uncle, hallelujah, or whoever, amen, but for the Lord. But there is a waiting which has to be uh, intertwined with expectance. It is not just waiting, 
Hello? Because at times we have waited, and in that waiting, it has become a, 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 a way of life. A, 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 a lifestyle. Whereas you told us, Pastor Jehovah, that whatever that we are going through is for our world. So our waiting should be for a while. But at times, because of lack of expectance in our waiting, the situation has become a, a habit or our normal life. Amen. Whereas we expect God to transform and change our situation or change us. But because of lack of mixing our waiting with expectation, David said, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord. And he inclined to me and had my prayer, my cry. There has to be expectance in our waiting. Hallelujah. And the Lord will surely manifest himself in our waiting. Amen. David says, Why it not that not I hope? Hallelujah. Why it not that I hope to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Hallelujah. It is because he waited expectantly to see the good in the land of the living. There is some good. Amen. And that is what the, 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 the writer in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 25. This is what it says. The Lord is good to those who wait hopefully and expectantly for him. The Lord is good, amen, to those, not to everybody. Hallelujah. Because if you wait without being hopeful, and we have said for a long time that being hopeful means it is an expectation of good coming my way or good happening into my life. That is hope. And now the writer says the Lord is good. In other words, there is goodness with this law. If we can wait expectantly, hallelujah, there is goodness because that is his nature. When he revealed himself to Moses, the Bible says, he said, I am merciful, gracious, abundant in goodness. And then he said in Psalm 23, but surely goodness, hallelujah, and mercy. What do you expect to follow you in all? When, when you wake up and leave your house to face the world, what do you expect to follow you alone? I expect to see the goodness of God. I expect to see 
masses of God are ahead of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hosea chapter, chapter 2, verse 15. As I'm about to be true. Hosea chapter 2, verse 15. This is what the Bible says. There I will keep her, her vineyards. Hallelujah. There, Hosea 2, 15. There I will keep her, her vineyards, and make the valley of Acre. Hello? And make the valley of Acre. Which, that word, the valley of Acre, means trouble or traveling. That valley, hallelujah. Though I walk in heaven, though I walk in the valley, because there are many valleys, sir. There is the valley of the shadow of death. There is the valley of decision. But in this time, in this valley, the valley of Acre, the valley of troubling, hallelujah, the valley of troubling to be her, I, I will give her and her vineyards and make the valley of troubling, the valley of Acre, to be for her a door of hope and expectation. Hallelujah. That door, that valley of troubling, hallelujah, the Lord is saying now that he is turning that valley of troubling into a door of hope and expectation. Hallelujah. That it is going to be a passage. It is going to be a place where that, that, that valley, that valley, that valley that you are going through, in other words, that trouble that you are in now, in that valley, God is saying he is transforming that valley into a door of hope and expectation. A door of hope, a door, it will be a, a door, a door, not a closed door, an open door. And it is the Lord who is making it an open door. And the Bible tells us that he opened a door that no one can shut. That with him is the keys of David. When he opened it, no one can shut. When he shut it, no one can close up. God is giving you a door of hope and expectation. That whatever that you are expecting in that body, in that body of traveling, whether in your life, whether in ministry, or whether in business, whatever it is, that body, God is opening a door. Hallelujah. And that door, amen, will bring whatever God has purposed to happen into your life. And let me finish with this, Hosea 6, Hosea 12, verse 6. Therefore, you turn to your God. Return. And hold fast to love and mercy. To righteousness and justice. And wait expectantly for your God continually. Continually. What does it mean to wait for the Lord continually? It means that your expectation should become a state of mind. A state of mind. That is the way you are thinking is a, or a mindset or an attitude in life, expectation. Because there is a door that in that valley, there is a door of expectation that has been opened. And that door, now you are the one who will keep it open by expecting continually. Amen. You keep the door by walking in a state of mind of expectance, a mindset, an attitude in life of expecting to receive the good of the Lord. Because the Bible says in, in Acts that this man, when he was told to look at Peter and John, the Bible says he looked expectantly to receive. To receive. Hallelujah. To receive. We are expectant to receive our breakthrough, our healing, in our deliverance, our victory, when we wake up every morning, I wake up singing hallelujah, I have a song in my heart and in my mouth of expectanta and a state of mind believing that this day, today, today is the day of breakthrough. Whatever God has promised that will happen concerning his word, today it is, this is the day. This is the day that is going to take place. And when it doesn't take place, I continually keep that state of mind tomorrow continually. 
I will continually keep that door open. So when the time of God to manifest will come, it will find me expected to receive. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for your word that we wait expectantly, continually. And in the body, in the body of Akka, in the body of trouble, you have opened a door of hope and expectancy. And we know the thoughts that you give towards us. They are of peace and not of evil. To give us the hope and the, and the expected future, expected end. For, the, for there is an end to everything. There is an end. Everything that has a beginning, it has an end. And in whatever season that we are in, in our violence or whatever traveling that it is, today a door has been opened to us. And we will maintain a mindset. We will maintain a state of mind of continually expecting every day is the day. This is the day for a miracle. We leave this place believing that your goodness and your mercies have gone before us. Opening doors of opportunities, connecting us to, 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 to destiny, connect us and destiny help us out. Opening doors of, of finances, opening doors of breakthrough and victory in our life to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.